Hello and welcome to the AMA instructional video series. Today we're going to take a look at basic technique and we're going to focus on the first three punches that we teach. In order to talk about teaching punches, we're going to have to talk about how to make a fist. Um, when someone learns to coordinate their body, it's quite possible that they will learn to hit hard enough to break bones. The only issue is, if it, they don't have the right structure in their hands, the bones they break will be their own. So let's talk about that. We want a nice solid fist with good structure. And uh, so zooming in on this, this is not a good fist. That's asking to hurt, hurt the fingers and the knuckles. The thumb doesn't go on the outside. The thumb doesn't go in the middle. The fingers don't stick out. We want a nice solid fist that is both flat this way, flat across the top, and finally also flat along the inside of the forearm. So there's two basic ways we can think about making our fist. We can think about rolling our knuckles at the first bend, then again, and using the thumb to sort of hold that roll down. Again, flat, flat, and flat. The other way we can think about it is we can almost try and grab a piece of our palm and then tuck the fingers under, and then again, roll the thumb up on the outside. The goal is for the fist to be structurally sound without there being a lot of tension in the forearm. So it's not a matter of squeezing our fist closed, but rather a matter of making the fist properly in the first place so it's nice and solid without any tension in the forearm. The next thing that we want to talk about when we're discussing punching is ensuring that we never lock out the elbow. So when we talk about full extension and punching, what we mean by full extension still leaves a little bit of room in the elbow. If you practice punching and straightening your arm entirely, what you will do is you will create a lot of stress and tension in the elbow joint itself which can eventually create a condition known as tennis elbow. We'd like to avoid all of that by keeping just a tiny bit of bend or softness in the elbow joints as we go through doing this. Now I'm going to have Sigal Christine come out and help uh, instruct me in how to properly throw the first three punches. Hello everyone. First we're going to need to get into our offensive stance and that will have our left foot forward. Our right foot is in the back. You're going to have your shoulders, your hips, and knees mostly pointed straight ahead. Um, the foot placement on the back foot can either be completely on the floor, like we have Super Christy here, um, with a slight angle to it. However, you see that his big toe, when we had it back before, is pointing towards the front like he's about ready to sprint or run, and that's the position that we want. If it's slightly off and not completely pointing straight ahead, that is okay. The big concern is about keeping those hips pointing straight ahead because we're going to be looking at some rotation. And if our foot is not in a position for us to rotate that back hip, we're not going to get the full power out of the punches that we have. So with our feet in place, shoulder width apart, and then shoulder width apart forward as well as sideways. Whatever is most comfortable for you. It may be slightly bigger, it may be slightly larger. Really, you just have to be in a position that's comfortable and that you can move and that you can rotate. And then we'll put our arms into place. We're going to have our right arm out in front of us, not off to the side. So if we're over here, this isn't going to do us much good because the punches are going to be coming straight at us. So you want it down the front of your body and that fist should be landing approximately along the center line of your body. We're going to take our left hand, again make that fist, and now you want that hand so that the fist right here is pointing towards something that you are about to punch. So if like Sifu did, if he opens his finger, it should be pointing exactly where he's going to punch if he rotates and fully extends that arm. Now, if we're doing it incorrectly, uh, this will either be pointed up higher, and so now when he does his point, he's pointed at the ceiling, and that's where his punch is going to go, or in the worst case scenario, he's going to be punching improperly, and so instead of coming straight out, he's going to be coming down like he's bopping something on the head or doing a hammer strike down on what he's doing, which is different than what we're trying to do with our lead hand jab. As we go into our lead hand jab, this left hand is going to go straight down the center as he does this punch, and then we're going to take both of his shoulders, they're going to 
rotate as both of the hips are going to rotate out while maintaining this right hand up towards his face so that he can block anything that's coming at him. Very nice execution while keeping this flat so that that's the striking surface of what we're about to hit. And then he returns back to his place and he rotates and does that punch one more time. Now, if we notice here, this hand did not stay up in front, so we need to make certain that this hand stays up in front. He also threw his body forward so that he's about falling off of his position. So we want him to sink down into both feet, make certain that the weight is on both feet, and that he's rotating upon his feet rather than shifting his weight forward or backwards. So there shouldn't be a shift to the front foot as you punch. It should just be a rotation of the hip in place where both feet are grounded on the floor. And then he returns back. We'll do three of those. I will count. After each number, he will execute the punch. One. And we also need to make certain that we keep our chin down, part of our six points, keeping our body in the right place. Just a quick review of those six points. It's about having a soft focus, having some forward inclination in your body, keeping that chin down, keeping those teeth together or clenched, making certain those hands are our fists, and then keeping the weight just behind the ball of the foot so that you have mobility. So we'll go on to number two. Two. Excellent, and return, and three. Excellent and return. If you notice, you saw all the rotation, kept the weight on the bottom of the feet, and made certain that he was punching right down the center line. Moving on to the next punch will be our straight punch. That's going to be with our rear hand. As you do this punch, you're going to make certain that this hand comes up to cover your face so that you have some protection while you're doing your punch. And then you return. Again, now we're going to be rotating the opposite direction, so the right hip is going to be coming forward as you pull that left hip backwards. So one of the ways I like to think about it is that these two are connected. You have your shoulder and your hips connected, so that when you turn, your body turns as a unit. So we'll have him execute a straight punch right down the center, and that body is a unit as he's doing it. And then return back. Again, one more time, going out, and returning back. Excellent. Now we'll do the three count, and we'll see how he does with each one. With the straight punch, one. And return. And two. And return. And three. And return. Excellent. You notice he had the rotation, he kept the weight right behind the ball of both feet so that he wasn't leaning one way or the direction. And since we've gone over both of those punches, we're going to have him show it what it looks like with just the hands, and then we're going to have show it what it looks like when you actually have the full rotation of the body behind the punch. So if we start with the lead hand jab and just have the hand go out. And again, that's just the hand going out. Notice that the only thing moving is his arm, and it's all coming from his shoulder. So if we return back to having that rotation, keeping your weight seated on both feet, and we'll do that jab, and then come back. There's some more power and some more authority behind the punch. Again, we hand jab. Yes. Now let's show what it looks like if we just throw the arm with our straight punch. We'll go ahead and back. It's almost like it's just unfolded as opposed to doing a punch. So now if we get that full rotation on, and back and the full rotation, and back. That adds some authority and some power behind that punch. Moving on to our final punch, it's going to be the hook. For the hook, we want to make certain that uh, we're using the elbow. We're going to be dropping that elbow down, keeping the arm bent as it comes up, and then rotating the shoulder and the hip so that the hook lands along the center line of the body just where all the other punches we're doing. So if we return back, again the hook, we drop the elbow, bring it up, rotate it, and return. It's like a big circle with your elbow, dropping it down, bringing it up, and circling it around. And then we return. 
Now, if he demonstrates what it looks like with just the shoulder and not having the body behind it, that's what it will look like. So we want to make certain, again, that we drop the shoulder, get the whole body behind it, and come back and return. The other thing that can happen is this arm can go straight. So as you go straight, it's like swinging it down and around and coming back. Again, that is not the direction of force that we're looking for, so you want to make certain that that elbow drops, bringing it around, and returning, and keeping that weight balanced just like he's doing it. We'll try three of those. Ready? One, and return. Two, return, three. Excellent. So, those are the three hooks. Now what we can do is we can look at using those as a part.